Finally, uh, over the weekend, well, and today, uh, there's been a lot of talk about a deal with Hamas. Uh, the, uh, there's a lot of pressure on Israel to cut a deal with Hamas. I talked about the defeatism last week. Well, defeatism is all uh, geared towards ultimately uh, getting, uh, getting Israel to accept the fact that it cannot defeat Hamas, it cannot win the war, and therefore it must cut a deal. Uh, Hamas uh, issued this morning an 18-page document trying to justify what it did on October 7th. It is interesting because it is very much geared to the Palestinian, it seems to be geared towards convincing the Palestinian population that what it did was good, that what it did was right, that what it did, the pain the Palestinian people are suffering as a consequence of what it did is all worth it and all justified because Hamas had the, the, the good, the well-being of the Palestinian people in mind. The purpose of October 7th, it says, was to prevent well, uh, the, 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 the turning of, of the West Bank into a Judaization of the West Bank, they call it, and to, or, to uh, liberate Gaza from uh, the oppression of this, uh, you know, uh, 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 from uh, the Israeli, uh, what is it, uh, embargo, uh, uh, you know, largest open air prison, they call it in the world. It's, it's funny. I, I've never, I don't know any example in history where um, a, a, a country and a political entity provides water, electricity, uh, food, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and everything else to an enemy sworn to destroy it. Sworn to destroy it. And, and uh, you know, the analysis is, look, even if all this destruction happens, but at the end of the day, what we get out of this is uh, some kind of political settlement that frees all of the prisoners that Israel has in order to get their hostages back. And if we get at the end of this, the opening up of Gaza and, uh, and, and, and Hamas back in power in Gaza, it was all worth it. And from, Gaza's, from Hamas's perspective, that is all true. But that, and that is what they are demanding. In order to release the hostages, they're demanding that Israel retreat, stop fighting, accept a Hamas leadership over Gaza, and uh, open up the Gazan borders. The Biden administration, on the other hand, is putting massive pressure on Israel to accept a two-state solution that, uh, it, it, that will include Hamas. That is, that uh, as part of a hostage release deal, that Israel accept the existence, to accept, move towards the establishment of a Palestinian state, which will include Hamas. I mean, any deal like this, any deal close to this would be an unequivocal travesty and a, um, a via, you know, just a, just a asking for many, many more October 7th. Uh, one of Hamas leaders over the weekend uh, did an interview in which he made clear that Hamas is not interested in a two-state solution. It's not interested in a Palestinian state next to Israel. Hamas is dedicated to a Palestinian state as a means towards global Sharia over the entire land that constitute Israel today. There is no body within the Palestinian Authority that really wants a small Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza. The Palestinian people have been so brainwashed, have been so indoctrinated, they don't want a Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza. The dominant view among Palestinians is the desire, the need for one state in which there are no or very few Jews. They want to eradicate the state of Israel. They've, all, they've wanted this pretty much forever. And they continue to want it, and nothing yet has changed. Indeed, only their complete defeat will change it. Only their complete subjugation in the short run will change it. Nothing short of that will change the dynamics in Israel. Palestinians do not want an Israeli state. 
They want genocide. They don't have the military power. They don't have the military force to inflict genocide. That is what they want. They want the Jews there dead or on ships out. Talk about ethnic cleansing and all the other names you have for it. The real genocidal force in the Middle East are the Palestinians, the Iranians, Hezbollah, I mean, elements within the Islamic world. Israel would be suicidal to accept any deal, any deal that compromises with Hamas, even if it involves freeing the hostages. And the more Israel seems to be willing to talk about it, the more likely it is that, um, the more it emboldens, put it this way, the more it emboldens um, Hamas. The more it emboldens all these people. Evil in the world. So uh, keep watching this. It's, it's only going to get worse. Uh, it's, um, uh, the world is slowly but systematically shifting uh, to its usual position, which is anti-Israel. Uh, anti uh, anti everything uh, and uh, of course it is it is Netanyahu that has brought us to this state. It is Netanyahu that's given Hamas every reason in the world for two decades now to believe that just with enough pressure he will fold. He will fold. Hasn't folded yet. Hasn't folded yet this time because this time the thing that's different this time is that this time he's reading the, the Israeli public. And this time his read of the Israeli public is that his only chance of political survival is to say no to these deals. Now, as soon as that shifts, as soon as he gets a sense that his base, just like Trump's base, is willing to accept a deal if he signs off on it, he will do it like that, like that. He is, just like so many political leaders, it's no different really, he is an unprincipled, power-lusting, compromising, I don't know, fill in the blank. All right.